Greetings and welcome to News Zim TV. I am Makanaka Masenyama. Stories making the headlines. Government fires 134 more doctors. In the court, Gushungo Dairy bombing saga convict resurfaces, says was coerced to plead guilty. In business, foreign currency deposits increase 5.41%. In sports, Kamsoko warns his warriors teammates of Zambia threat. Now for the news in detail. A government has fired another 134 doctors to add to the 77 discharged last week, bringing the total to 211 as the two months old strike by public health practitioners continue. Last month, junior doctors ignored a labor court ruling that declared the strike which began on September 3 illegal. The doctors insisted they were incapacitated to return to work. Government then began disciplinary hearings against the medical practitioners, but the Zimbabwe Hospital Doctors Association, which represents junior doctors, announced its members would also not be able to attend the disciplinary hearings. On Friday, the Health Services Board in a statement said, to date, 279 doctors had been charged, 213 hearings completed, and 211 doctors found guilty of absenting themselves from duty without leave or reasonable cause for days ranging from five or more. Despite failing to meet its target to fully digitize, government has announced it will in the next few weeks cross over from the analog platform. According to the Broadcasting Authority of Zimbabwe Chief Executive Officer Obit Maganyura, the project to digitize the country's airwaves is only 37.5% complete four years on. Zimbabwe all in all requires 48 digital transmitters to fully digitize, but he has managed only 18. Information Minister Monica Mchangwa said government had made a decision to outsource digital receivers that are compatible with the new system after realizing that it could not single-handedly fund the whole process. The Broadcasting Authority of Zimbabwe Board, you are expected to assist the ministry in coming up with innovative ways of completing this migration program. I must point out that Significant progress has been made on this project, as uh, clearly said by uh, CEO Engineer Mkanyura, that 18 of the 48 television transmitter sites now are capable of transmitting digital television signals. If they are fully digital, there's been money which has been invested. Where you invest money, you expect a return. And we are saying, let's start benefiting. Let's start beginning to get some out of that investment. Zimbabwe embarked on the digitization project in 2015 at the instigation of the International Telecommunications Union, which proposed a shift from analog broadcasting to digital broadcasting across the world by 2016. President Emerson Mnangagwa has commissioned 76 Zupko buses in Bulawayo, set to ply mainly rural routes in the Matebeleland region. Speaking during the commissioning of the buses at the large city hall car park Friday, President Munangago said the new fleet of buses is expected to ease transport challenges which both rural and urban commuters have been facing. The buses are part of a fleet acquired by government from South Africa, China and Belarus as efforts to resuscitate struggling parastatal continue. Government also wants to provide a more reliable and affordable public transport system as private players continue to rip ordinary people with exorbitant fees. In the courts. Jailed opposition Zimbabwe People's Front Party leader Owen Kuchata, who is serving a nine-year prison term for a foiled attempt to bomb the late former President Robert Mugabe's dairy plant in Mazowe, now claims he was forced to admit to the crime. Harare Magistrate Hosayam Jaya convicted Kuchata four years ago after a full trial on charges of insurgency, sabotage, terrorism on his own guilty plea.
Kuchata has now made an application for a review of his case at the High Court, in which he argues Mujaya erred by not advising him of his rights, including right to legal representation. The jailed politician wants a rescission of Mujaya's ruling. In business, foreign currency deposits have maintained a growth trajectory increasing to 5.41%, indicating a significant recovery from the slump which was experienced in the month of July 2019, a recent monthly economic review by the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe has shown. The latest monthly report covering the period ending August 31, 2019, shows foreign currency inflows have significantly increased. According to the central bank, the increase was attributable to a rise in export earnings from gold 41%, nickel ore and concentrates 27.8% and ferrochrome 28.1%. We end with sports. Zimbabwe's Group H AFCON 2021 qualifier against northern rival Zambia will be a tough encounter, Warriors midfield anchorman Tabani Kamsoko has warned. Kamsoko will be in familiar territory when Warriors travel to Lusaka four days after meeting Botswana at the National Sports Stadium, given he turns out for Zesco United in the Zambian Premier League. The dreadlocked midfielder said Zimbabwe's warriors have to be very careful against Polo Polo, as Zambia are affectionately known, indicating they have an array of good stars who can beat any team on this continent on their day. Reporting for NewZimbabwe.com, I am Makanaka Masenyama. For this and more stories, visit our website www.newzimbabwe.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel, NewZim TV.